Your credit score is super important. The higher it is, the lower interest rates you'll have to pay whenever you go to borrow money. This is going to save you a bunch of money over time, give you access to more capital and leverage, and allow you to get into larger investments like real estate. But unfortunately, not much education goes toward learning how to build up your credit score. And some of the advice out there is just plain wrong. This video is going to explain 11 things that you might be doing right now that are ruining your credit score. We'll also talk about actionable things that you can start doing to day to improve your credit score and thus your financial future. If that sounds good, make sure to actionably click that like button to improve this video's future in the YouTube algorithm. While you're down there, please also subscribe and ring the bell if you would like to be notified when new videos come out every Friday. They'll help you live a life you love through personal finance, investing, and self-improvement. Hi, I'm Evan and let's break down your credit score. Your credit score is a number ranging from 300 to 850, which essentially measures how trustworthy you are in terms of paying back your debts and other money that you owe. There are are five major factors that go into calculating your credit score. They are your payment history, credit utilization or amount owed, length of your credit history, your credit mix or credit variety, and new credit or credit inquiries. Let's look at things you might be doing to hurt your credit score and how you can improve it in each of these categories. We'll start with payment history because that's the most important factor in calculating your credit score, accounting for 35% of its calculation. Number one, not starting early. For a lot of younger people, the only way that they're building credit is through student loans. Now, you may be in a situation where your parents co-sign on a car loan with you, although that's generally going to be unlikely because most younger people tend to have no credit history. When you turn 18, you should get a credit card. This will allow you to build a longer track record of on-time payment history, which again is the most important factor in determining your credit score. Even if you have no credit, you can get yourself a secured credit card to start. These work in the same way as a normal credit card, but your credit limit or the maximum amount of money that you can spend on credit per month is based on a cash deposit that you give to the credit card company. This secures your credit line. Number two, carry over balances. This is a popular myth for building credit, that you should carry over a little bit of your balance continuously into the next month to build up your credit. This is not true since it is preferable to just pay off the full amount that you owe every single month. When you start carrying over a balance, this is when credit card companies start to charge you interest. And with high credit card rates, this debt can start to snowball out of control very quickly. This may not just ruin your credit score now, but potentially a lot of your financial future as well. It's not great to be burdened by high interest credit card debt. Similarly, there's number three, not paying your balance in full. This can also be stated as missing deadlines or just not paying attention. To give you an example, one of my cards has a 3% cash back deal on dining. When you go out to eat, you generally leave a tip. This normally takes longer to process and therefore may not appear on your credit card statement. So when you go to make a payment, check your transaction history so that you're definitely paying off your balance in full, not just the current balance shown on your statement, as that may not include pending purchases. Also set a recurring reminder to pay off your balance every month, or you can set up automatic payment. Next, let's go over your credit utilization or amounts owed. Your credit utilization is the percentage of how much you owe versus how much you're allowed to borrow. So if you have a credit line of $5,000 and you've spent $1,000, that puts your credit utilization at 20%. This brings us to number four, having a high credit utilization. You should aim for your credit utilization per account and for your overall total credit amount to be in the 20 to 30% range. Going back to to the $5,000 credit line example, you should not spend more than $1,000 to $1,500 per month on that credit line. Credit utilization can also help you in the other direction than what you spent, and that's by having more total credit available to you. Number five, not increasing your total available credit. Now you can do this by adding more accounts as we'll discuss later, but let's start with the accounts you already may have. Assuming you're in good standing with your credit card companies, you can call them every six months to a year or so and ask for an increase in your credit line. If you have a history of on-time payments and generally good credit, you'll likely get an increased credit limit for free just by simply asking for it. This will also increase the amount of your optimal utilization range in case you'd like to spend more money on credit. That may be beneficial compared to spending money on debit due to various cash back rewards and other bonuses. Now let's talk about the length of your credit history. Unfortunately, unlike the other categories, this one is a little bit more out of your control. You just need time to pass in order for your accounts to become older. However, the earlier you start, the better, as we talked about back in number one. And then here's something a little bit more interesting. Number six, closing up accounts early or unnecessarily. The age of your credit history is taken as the average age of all of your accounts. So if you decide to close out your first credit card after having it for 10 years, just because you don't use it anymore, that can lower your average age of credit and thus decrease your credit score. You'll also have less available credit and one less account, which can also impact your credit score. And similarly to closing accounts early, we'll call this one number six and a half, paying off accounts early. This is a popular goal with say student loans. 
loans. People want to pay them off as soon as possible to become debt free. While doing that can actually hurt you financially in a few ways. First, there's the effect on your age of credit like we talked about earlier. Paying off your loans early means you also won't have them for as long as possible. And doing so will naturally increase your average age of credit as time passes. Second, there's an opportunity cost of paying off your loans early. Federal student loans have an average interest rate of about 4%. You can get yourself 5% in the bond market per year or about 8 to 10% annually in the stock market on average. Paying off loans early means that you miss out on the opportunity cost of investing the extra money that goes towards paying those loans rather than putting it into investments. In that case, you would profit the difference from your investment gains minus your loan's interest rate. On the high end, that opportunity cost could be up to 6% per year. If you pay off a $10,000 loan in full, you're costing yourself about $8,000 in investment gains over a 10-year loan term. So in summary, paying off low interest rate loans sooner than necessary can both hurt your credit score and cost you a lot of money in terms of opportunity cost. Next up, we have new credit or credit inquiries. An inquiry is when a lender checks your credit history after you have applied for something or just simply as a background check. Inquiries can be either hard or soft. Hard inquiries occur when you give permission to someone to check your credit, such as when you apply for a credit card or for a mortgage. Soft inquiries happen when somebody checks your credit without notifying you. This could be a credit card company checking your history so that they can send you out new offers, or it could be a potential employer checking your credit worthiness as part of a background check. Hard inquiries are going to temporarily decrease your credit score. Don't worry when you see your score go down though. The hard inquiry will stop impacting your score pretty quickly and it should disappear from your report entirely within two years. So what mistakes might you be making? Well, first there's number seven, making too many applications too quickly. If you go out and apply for a bunch of different credit cards at the same time because you want to increase the amount of accounts that you have and to diversify your credit mix, well, that's a bad idea. Having a bunch of applications and hard inquiries too quickly can signal untrustworthiness and that you may plan on racking up a bunch of debt soon. In contrast, there's number eight, being scared of hard inquiries. As sad as it may be to see your score temporarily go down, it is a necessary part of the credit building process. Similarly, don't be too scared and wait the full two years for that hard inquiry to disappear before you apply for your next credit account. Generally, waiting six months to a year between applications is going to be plenty of time, and having more accounts will help boost your credit score by various means, showing more history of on-time payments, increasing your total available credit, and diversifying your credit mix. Finally, of the major credit score factors, we have your credit mix or credit variety. This just means having a few different types of credit. So having a student loan, a credit card, and a car loan would be preferable than just having credit cards. This brings us to number nine, unnecessarily diversifying your credit account. Credit mix is probably the least important credit factor, tied at 10% of calculating your credit score along with hard inquiries. So you shouldn't think about getting a car loan just to diversify your credit mix if you only have student loans or just credit cards. That kind of decision requires much more thought than just its impact on building your credit. For loans of any kind, you'll have to figure out how you're going to be able to finance it and whether your money is being put to good use with it. With cars, they generally depreciate or decrease in value as they're used. This means that you would still be paying interest on the loan despite the asset or the car decreasing in value. That's a losing investment. That's a long way of saying that credit mix isn't super important, so don't worry about it too much. Let's look at some other things that might be hurting your credit score rather than just the factors that go into calculating it. Number 10, not monitoring your score. There's a few reasons why this can hurt you. First, there's the obvious threat of identity theft or not catching other scams soon enough. Things like that are all too common, unfortunately, and they've only seen more spikes in recent years. If you're not monitoring your score or you don't have active alerts set up on your accounts, you may end up in a really bad situation if you become the victim of identity theft. Sadly, it will take a lot of time and effort to recover from this sort of a situation. Also, if you're not monitoring your credit score, you won't be able to track your progress. Psychologically, it is very important to measure where you started to where you've been and then all the peaks and valleys along the way. It can help you stay motivated on the journey and it will give you better insight on how to improve your situation depending on why your score isn't where you want it to be. I track mine with Mint. Similarly, on the psychological side, we have number 11, not setting goals. I think for most things in our lives, it is very important to set goals. It gives us something to consistently work for. It can also help us see the bigger picture by creating actionable steps in the short term that will eventually get us to where we want to be. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people my age and younger not care about credit or abuse the 0% APR for however many months to go on spending sprees that will eventually ruin their credit and put them into serious debt. Setting goals will help you to avoid these pitfalls by giving you something to work toward and keep you focused. Maybe you wanna buy a house someday. Having a good credit score will help you secure a low interest rate mortgage. If you wanna start a business, a good credit score will help you lock in a low interest rate business loan too. Having a good credit score will 
simply make your financial life easier for you. You'll have easier and cheaper access to money, and you can utilize that as leverage to make investments into larger purchases like real estate, secure business loans, or even lower your car insurance rate. With that, make sure to make an investment into that like button to secure this video's rate in the YouTube algorithm. Did you learn anything useful from this video? What can I do to make future videos better? What is your advice of things to avoid to build up a better credit score? Let me know. Comment down below. Click the video on screen to watch another that you're going to enjoy and then please add some music, an improved credit score, or whatever else it is that you love to your day.